defining Python constants for code maintainability. In programming, the term constant refers to names representing values that don't change during a program's execution. Constants are a fundamental concept in programming, and Python developers use them in many cases. But Python doesn't have a dedicated syntax for defining constants, and in practice, Python constants are just variables that never change. To prevent programmers from reassigning a name that's supposed to hold a constant, the Python community has adopted a naming convention of using uppercase letters. For every Pythonista, it's essential to know what constants are, as well as why and when to use them. So in this course, you'll learn how to properly define constants in Python, identify some built-in constants, use constants to improve your code's readability, reusability and maintainability, apply different approaches to organize and manage constants in a project, and use several techniques to make constants strictly constant in Python. By learning to define and use constants, you'll dramatically improve your code's readability, maintainability, and reusability. To get the most from this course, you'll need basic knowledge of Python variables, functions, modules, packages, and namespaces. You'll also need to know the basics of object-oriented programming in Python. Any code that you see running in the REPL will be using the bPython interpreter. This is a replacement Python interpreter that offers a number of enhancements, including code highlighting and suggestions, but any code you see running on screen will work in the Python REPL, which is typically accessed by typing Python or Python 3 at your terminal or command line prompt. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Understanding constants and variables. Variables and constants are two historical and fundamental concepts in computer programming. Most programming languages use these concepts to manipulate data and work in an effective and logical fashion. Variables and constants will probably be present in each project, app, library, or other piece of code that you'll write. The question is, what are they? In math, a variable is defined as a symbol that refers to a value or quantity that can change over time. In programming, a variable is also a symbol or name typically associated with a memory address containing a value, object, or piece of data. As in math, the content of a programming variable can change during the execution of the code that defines it. Variables typically have a descriptive name that's somehow associated with a target value or object. This target value can be any data type, so you can use variables to represent numbers, strings, sequences, custom objects, and more. You can perform two main operations on a variable, access its value and assign it a new value. In most programming languages, you can access the value associated with a variable by citing the variable's name in your code. To assign a new value to a given variable, you'll use an assignment statement, which often consists of the variable's name, an assignment operator, and the desired value. In practice, you'll find many examples of magnitudes, data, and objects that you can represent as variables. A few examples include temperature, speed, time, and length. Other examples of data that you can treat as variables include the number of registered users in a web app, the number of active characters in a video game, and the number of miles covered by a runner. Math also has the concept of constants. This term refers to a value or quantity that never changes. In programming, constants refer to names associated with values that never change during a program's execution. Just like variables, programming constants consist of two things, a name and an associated value. The name will clearly describe what the constant is about. The value is the concrete expression of the constant itself. As with variables, the value associated with a given constant can be of any data type. So you can define integer constants, floating point constants, character constants, string constants, and more. Once you've defined a constant, it will only allow you to perform a single operation on it. You can only access the constant's value, but not change it over time. This is different from a variable, which allows you to access it, but also reassign it. You'll use constants to represent values that won't change. You'll find lots of these values in day-to-day -day programming. A few examples include the speed of light, 
the number of minutes in an hour, and the name of a project's root folder. In most programming languages, constants protect you from accidentally changing their values somewhere in the code when you're coding at 2 in the morning, causing unexpected and hard to debug errors. Constants also help you make your code more readable and maintainable. Some of the advantages of using constants instead of using their values directly in your code include improved readability. A descriptive name representing a given value throughout a program is always more readable and explicit than the bare bones value itself. For example, it's easier to read and understand a constant named max speed rather than just the number itself. Clear communication of intent. Most people will assume that 3.14 may refer to the pi constant, but using pi, pi or pi as a name will communicate your intent more clearly than using the value directly. This practice will allow other developers to understand your code quickly and accurately. Most of the time these assumptions would be correct, but there may be situations where 3.14 wouldn't be referring to pi and it could mislead someone reading the code further down the line. Better maintainability. Constants enable you to use the same name to identify the same value throughout your code. If you need to update the constant's value, then you don't have to change every instance of the value. You just have to change the value in a single place, the constant definition. This improves the code's maintainability. Lower risk of errors. A constant representing a given value throughout a program is less error prone than several explicit instances of the value. Let's say that you use different precision levels for pi depending on the target calculation. You've explicitly used the values with the required precision for every calculation. If you need to change the precision in a set of calculations, then replacing the values can be error prone because you can end up changing the wrong values. It's safer to create different constants for the different precision levels and change the code in a single place. Reduce debugging needs. Constants will remain unchanged during the program's lifetime. Because they'll always have the same value, they shouldn't cause errors and bugs. This feature may not be necessary in small projects, but it may be crucial in larger projects with multiple developers. They won't have to invest time debugging the current value of any constant. Thread safe data storage. Constants can only be accessed, not written. This feature makes them thread safe objects which means that several threads can simultaneously use a constant without the risk of corrupting or losing the underlying data. You've just seen a number of good reasons that constants are an important concept in programming. They can make your life more pleasant and your code more reliable, maintainable and readable. So the next question is when you should use them. Life, and particularly science, is full of constant values which never change. A few examples are seen on screen. A constant denoted by pi, spelled as pi in English, which represents the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. A constant denoted by e, and known as Euler's number, which is closely related to the natural logarithm and compound interest. The number of seconds in an hour, which is considered constant in most applications, even though leap seconds are sometimes added to account for variability in the Earth's rotation speed. A constant representing absolute zero in degrees Celsius, which is equal to zero on the Kelvin temperature scale. All of these examples are constant values that people commonly use in life and science. In programming, you'll often find yourself dealing with these and many other similar values that you can consider and treat as constants. So you now know you should use a constant to represent a quantity, magnitude, object, parameter, or any other piece of data that's supposed to remain unchanged during its lifetime. So in the next section of the course, you'll take a look at how you define constants in Python. Defining your own constants in Python. Up to this point, you've learned about constants as a general concept in life, science, and programming. But now it's time to learn how Python deals with constants. First, you should know that Python doesn't have a dedicated syntax for defining them. In other words, Python doesn't have constants in the strict sense of the word. It only has variables, primarily because of its dynamic nature. Therefore, to have a constant in Python, you need to define a variable that never changes and stick to that behavior by avoiding assignment operations on the variable itself. In this section, you'll focus on defining your own constants 
but there are some built into Python, and you'll learn about them later on in the course. So given that Python doesn't have the strict concept of constants built into it, how do developers know that a given variable represents one? The Python community has decided to use a strong naming convention to distinguish between variables and constants. You write the name in capital letters with underscores separating words, as stated in the constant section of PEP8, the Python style guide. On screen, you can see a few examples of user-defined Python constants. Note that these are created in exactly the same way as you create variables. You've used a descriptive name, the assignment operator, and the constant's specific value. By using capital letters only, you're communicating that the current name is intended to be treated as a constant, or more precisely, as a variable that never changes. So other Python developers will know that and hopefully won't perform any assignment operation on the variable at hand. Note that this is just a convention and it doesn't prevent developers from assigning new values to the constant. So any programmer working on your code needs to be careful and never write code that changes the values of constants. And remember, this rule applies to you as well. Because Python constants are just variables, both follow similar naming rules with the only distinction being that constants use uppercase letters only. Following this idea, constants names can be of any length, consist of uppercase letters, include digits but not as their first character, and use the underscore character to separate words or as their first character. Using uppercase letters makes your constants stand out from variables. This way, other developers will unambiguously recognize their purpose. As a general naming recommendation, avoid abbreviated names when defining constants. The purpose of a constant's name is to clarify the meaning of the constant's value so you can reuse it later. This goal demands descriptive names. Avoid using single letter names, uncommon abbreviations, and generic names such as number or magnitude. The recommended practice is to define constants at the top of any Python file right after import statements. This way, people reading your code will immediately know the constant's purpose and expected treatment. Module level dunder names are special names that start and end with a double underscore. Some examples are seen on screen. These names are typically treated as constants in Python projects. According to Python's coding style guide, PEP8, module level dunder names should appear after the module's doc string and before any import statements except for dunder future imports. On screen is a sample module that includes a number of dunder names. Here, Dunder All defines upfront the list of names that Python will import when you use the from module import star import construct in your code. In this case, someone importing greeting with a wildcard import will just get the greet function back. They won't have access to Dunder Author, Dunder Version, and other names not listed on Dunder All. The Python community strongly discourages this import construct, commonly known as wildcard imports, because it tends to clutter your current namespace with names that you probably won't use in your code and makes reading it less clear. In contrast, Dunder Author and Dunder Version have meaning only for the code's authors and users rather than for the code's logic itself. These names should be treated as constants, since no code can be allowed to change the author or version during the program's execution. Note that the greet function does access the Dunder names, but doesn't change them. On screen, you can see how greet works in practice. In general, there are no hard rules that prevent you from defining your own module level Dunder names. But the Python documentation strongly warns against using Dunder names other than those generally accepted and used by the community. The core developers may introduce new Dunder names to the language in the future, 
so it's best to avoid using them, as then there will never be any chance of a clash. In the next section of the course, you'll see how you can put constants to action in your code.